Welcome to the Saving History Podcast, the sanctuary for castle devotees and medieval history enthusiasts. Prepare to embark on a thrilling voyage through time as we unveil enthralling history and legends. From ancient folklore to cutting-edge restoration, we've got it all covered. So grab your headphones and let's dive right in. In 1622, France was a nation at a crossroads. The Thirty Years' War was raging across Europe, and the Kingdom of France was navigating a treacherous political landscape. It was a time of shifting allegiances, religious turmoil, and the constant threat of conflict, both from within and beyond its borders. It was against this backdrop that King Louis XIII, seeking to bolster his power and protect his reign, created a new elite company of soldiers, the Musketeers of the Guard. The Musketeers were not an entirely novel concept. Elite royal guards had existed in various forms throughout history. However, the formation of the Musketeers marked a significant departure from the norm. They were envisioned as an elite fighting force, combining the skill of the traditional infantry with the versatility of cavalry. These men would be at the king's beck and call, ready to engage in combat or guard the sovereign at a moment's notice. Jean-Anne du Pera, Comte de Troisville, was appointed the first captain, lieutenant of the musketeers. He was a seasoned soldier with a reputation for bravery and tactical acumen, was the perfect choice to lead this new corps. Born into a noble family, Troisville had risen through the ranks of the French military, earning his stripes in numerous campaigns. His appointment was both a recognition of his service and a testament to the trust King Louis placed in him. As Troisville set about assembling the musketeers, he sought men who were not only skilled with the musket and sword, but also possessed unflinching loyalty to the crown. Recruitment was rigorous. Prospective musketeers were subjected to a battery of tests designed to assess their physical endurance, combat skill, and mental fortitude. The men who passed these tests were then trained intensively, honing their abilities to meet the high standards expected of them, the early days of the musketeers were marked by a sense of camaraderie and purpose. These men were more than just soldiers. They were part of an elite brotherhood, bound by honour and duty. The musketeers operated with a strict code of conduct that emphasised loyalty, bravery and chivalry. They were expected to conduct themselves with dignity both on and off the battlefield, upholding the values of the corps and serving as exemplary representatives of the king. Life as a musketeer was demanding. Training was grueling, involving long hours of drills and exercises. Musketeers had to master the use of their signature weapon, the musket, as well as the rapier, a type of slender, sharply pointed sword. The musket was a relatively new addition to the European battlefield, and its effective use required both skill and practice. Musketeers also trained in horseback riding, as they needed to be proficient both on foot and on horseback. Their dual role as infantry and cavalry set them apart from other soldiers of the time. In addition to their military training, musketeers were schooled in the arts of diplomacy and courtly behaviour. As members of the King's Guard, they were often called upon to serve in the royal court, acting as bodyguards and occasionally as emissaries. Their presence at court served as a constant reminder of the King's power and the strength of his loyal forces. The political climate of the time was fraught with danger. King Louis faced threats from various quarters, including rebellious nobles, foreign adversaries, and internal factions vying for power. The musketeers played a crucial role in maintaining the stability of the kingdom. They were often deployed to quash uprisings, defend strategic positions, and engage in skirmishes with enemy forces. Their presence on the battlefield was both a strategic advantage and a psychological boost to the king's allies. One of the earliest and most significant deployments of the musketeers was during the siege of La Rochelle. La Rochelle was a Protestant stronghold and a hotbed of rebellion against the Catholic king. The siege was a test of the musketeers' mettle as they faced formidable opposition in a protracted and brutal conflict. 
Under Troisville's leadership, the Musketeers distinguished themselves with their courage and tenacity, contributing to the eventual fall of the city and reinforcing their reputation as an elite fighting force. Despite the romanticized image of the Musketeers as dashing adventurers, their lives were often marked by hardship and sacrifice. They faced the harsh realities of 17th century warfare, including disease, injury, and the ever present risk of death. Yet, their unwavering commitment to the king and their comrades sustained them through these challenges. They were more than just soldiers. They were the embodiment of the king's will, defenders of the realm, and symbols of French honor. Imagine the crack of dawn breaking over the sprawling courtyard of a French barracks in the early 17th century. The cold air is crisp and biting, and the ground is still wet with morning dew. For a young recruit aspiring to join the musketeers of the guard, this is where their day begins a day that will test their limits and forge them into elite soldiers in the service of King Louis XIII. The life of a musketeer was not for the faint-hearted. It demanded rigorous discipline, unwavering dedication, and an ironclad will. The training regimen was designed to push recruits to their physical and mental limits, ensuring that only the best and most capable soldiers donned the distinctive tabard of the musketeers. Training typically began at the break of dawn, with physical exercises to build strength and endurance. Recruits would run laps around the courtyard, perform calisthenics, and engage in various strength training exercises. This grueling morning routine was crucial in preparing them for the demands of battle. A musketeer needed to be in peak physical condition to endure the hardships of long marches, close combat, and the weight of their equipment. One of the most critical aspects of a musketeer's training was mastering the use of their primary weapons, the musket and the rapier. The musket, a relatively new firearm at the time, was a powerful but unwieldy weapon. Recruits spent countless hours learning to load, aim, and fire their muskets with precision. They practiced shooting at stationary and moving targets, owning their accuracy and speed. The smell of gunpowder and the deafening sound of musket fire filled the air, creating an atmosphere charged with intensity and determination. Equally important was the rapier, a slender, sharply pointed sword designed for thrusting. Swordsmanship was an art form, requiring agility, precision and finesse. Under the watchful eyes of experienced instructors, recruits engaged in fencing drills and sparring matches. They learned to parry, thrust and counter-attack, developing the skills necessary to prevail in close combat. The clanging of steel against steel against steel echoed through the courtyard as they practiced their footwork and refined their techniques. In addition to their infantry skills, musketeers were also trained as cavalry. Proficiency in horsemanship was essential, as they needed to be adept at fighting both on foot and on horseback. Recruits spent hours in the saddle, learning to control their mounts with precision. They practiced mounted drills, charging maneuvers, and firing their muskets from horseback. The bond between a musketeer and his horse was one of trust and mutual reliance, crucial for effective cavalry operations. Discipline was the backbone of the musketeer's training. Recruits were subjected to a strict code of conduct that governed their behavior both in and out of uniform. They learned to follow orders without question, to maintain their equipment meticulously, and to conduct themselves with dignity and honor. Drills were a daily part of their routine, reinforcing the importance of precision and coordination. Whether it was a parade formation or a tactical maneuver, every movement was executed with exacting discipline. The life of a musketeer was not just about physical prowess— it also required sharp mental acuity and tactical understanding. Recruits studied military strategy, learning the principles of battlefield tactics and the art of war. They were taught to analyze terrain, anticipate enemy movements, and develop effective battle plans. This intellectual training was vital for making quick, informed decisions in the heat of combat. To truly understand the life of a musketeer, let us follow a day in the life of a young recruit named Etienne. 
Etienne rises before the sun, the cold air piercing through his thin blanket. He quickly dresses and joins his fellow recruits in the courtyard. The day begins with a rigorous run, followed by strength training exercises. As the sun climbs higher, they move on to musket drills. Etienne's shoulders ache from the weight of the musket, but he pushes through, determined to improve his aim. After a brief respite for a midday meal, the recruits shift to swordsmanship training. Etienne faces off against his sparring partner, their rapiers clashing as they practice their thrusts and parries. The hours pass in a blur of sweat and exertion. The instructor's voice is a constant reminder of the high standards they must meet. In the afternoon, Etienne mounts his horse for cavalry training. He guides his steed through complex manoeuvres, firing his musket from the saddle and practising charges. The bond between man and horse grows stronger with each session, a testament to the trust they must have in one another. As evening falls, the recruits gather for a lecture on military strategy. Etienne listens intently, absorbing the lessons on battlefield tactics and leadership. The day ends with a final drill, a display of their hard-earned skills and discipline. Exhausted but resolute, Etienne retires to his quarters, knowing that tomorrow will bring another day of challenges and opportunities to prove his worth. Amidst the rigorous training and strict discipline, a strong sense of camaraderie and brotherhood developed among the musketeers. They were not just soldiers, but part of an elite fraternity bound by shared experiences and mutual respect. This bond was crucial, for in battle they relied on one another for survival. The life and training of a musketeer were demanding and arduous, but it was this relentless pursuit of excellence that forged them into the formidable force they were known to be. Their journey from raw recruits to elite soldiers was a testament to their resilience, skill, and unwavering dedication to their king and country. In understanding the life and training of a musketeer, we gain a deeper appreciation for the sacrifices and hardships they endured. They were more than just the romanticized heroes of literature. They were real men who dedicated their lives to a higher cause, embodying the values of honor, bravery, and loyalty that defined the musketeers of the guard. The battlefield was the crucible where the musketeers of the guard truly proved their mettle. While their training and discipline were impeccable, it was in the heat of combat that their skills were tested to the fullest. From the dusty plains of northern Italy to the fortified walls of rebellious cities within France, the musketeers faced countless challenges that would cement their legacy as elite soldiers of the king. One of the most significant and grueling campaigns that showcased the valour of the musketeers was the siege of La Rochelle. La Rochelle was a Huguenot stronghold on the western coast of France, fiercely resistant to the Catholic monarchy of Louis XIII. The city, fortified and determined to maintain its independence, became a focal point of conflict. The siege began in September 1627, under the command of Cardinal Richelieu, the king's chief minister and a master strategist, the musketeers were among the first to be deployed, tasked with breaching the formidable defences of La Rochelle. The air was thick with tension and the smell of salt from the nearby sea, as cannons roared and muskets fired. The musketeers' role was crucial. They were on the front lines, leading the charge against the city's walls. Captain Lieutenant Charles de Batz, Castlemore d'Artagnan, a young but promising officer, stood out during the siege. D'Artagnan's daring exploits and strategic brilliance earned him the respect of his peers and superiors alike. During one particularly fierce assault, D'Artagnan led a small band of musketeers in a nighttime raid to sabotage enemy cannon. The mission was perilous, but D'Artagnan's courage and quick thinking ensured its success, crippling the city's defences and turning the tide in favour of the besieging forces. The conditions during the siege were brutal. The musketeers, along with other royal forces, endured harsh weather, scarce supplies and constant enemy fire. The psychological toll was immense as they watched comrades fall and face the grim realities of siege warfare. 
Yet their unwavering commitment to their mission and the camaraderie among them kept their spirits high. The siege lasted for over a year, culminating in the surrender of La Rochelle in October 1628. The victory was a significant triumph for Louise and Cardinal Richelieu, further consolidating royal power. For the musketeers, it was a testament to their resilience, bravery, and tactical prowess. Their role in the siege became a defining moment in their history, celebrated and remembered in both official records and personal recollections. The musketeers were also pivotal in the broader theatre of the Thirty Years' War, a protracted and devastating conflict that engulfed much of Europe. France's involvement in the war saw the musketeers deployed to various fronts where they engaged in numerous battles and skirmishes. One of the notable engagements was the Battle of Lutter in 1626, where the musketeers fought alongside the forces of Duke Christian of Denmark. The battle was a chaotic and bloody affair marked by intense hand-to-hand -hand combat and the relentless exchange of musket fire. The musketeers known for their disciplined formations and strategic acumen, played a crucial role in stabilizing the French lines and repelling enemy advances. A veteran musketeer named Henry de Jossac distinguished himself during the Battle of Lutter. Known for his stoic demeanor and sharp tactical mind, de Jossac led a counterattack that broke through the enemy's flanks, turning the tide of the battle. His leadership and bravery under fire were instrumental in securing a hard-fought victory, earning him commendations and solidifying his status as a hero among the ranks. The battles of the Thirty Years' War were marked by their unpredictability and the sheer scale of destruction. The musketeers faced formidable opponents, including the well-trained and disciplined armies of the Holy Roman Empire and Spain. Each engagement tested their limits, pushing them to adapt and innovate on the battlefield. Another significant battle that underscored the musketeers' prowess was the Battle of Rockroy in 1643. This battle, fought against the Spanish, was a decisive encounter that marked the decline of Spanish dominance in Europe. The musketeers, under the command of the young Duke of Enghien, played a crucial role in the French victory. The battle was fiercely contested, with the Spanish tercios renowned for their formidable infantry formations posing a significant challenge. The musketeers, however, displayed exceptional bravery and tactical ingenuity. They engaged the tercios in close combat, utilizing their superior training and mobility to outmaneuver the enemy. Their ability to fight both on foot and on horseback proved invaluable, allowing them to exploit weaknesses in the Spanish lines. A seasoned musketeer named Antoine de saint Gilles exemplified the spirit of the corps during the Battle of Rockroy. Despite being wounded early in the battle, saint Gilles refused to retreat. He rallied his fellow musketeers, leading a charge that pierced the heart of the Spanish formations. His actions not only inspired his comrades, but also played a pivotal role in securing a landmark victory for France, the aftermath of the Battle of Rockroy was a turning point in European military history. It signaled the rise of France as a dominant military power and showcased the effectiveness of the musketeer as an elite fighting force. Their performance in battle earned them admiration and respect, further enhancing their legendary status. While the tales of battlefield glory are captivating, it is essential to remember the human cost of such conflicts. The musketeers, like all soldiers, faced immense hardships. They witnessed the horrors of war firsthand the loss of friends, the ravages of disease, and the constant spectre of death. Their bravery was often tempered by the harsh realities of their profession. Yet it was their unwavering dedication to their duty and their camaraderie that defined the musketeers. They were more than just warriors. They were brothers in arms, bound by a shared commitment to honor, loyalty, and service to their king. While the musketeers of the guard were united in their loyalty to King Louis, their existence was far from harmonious. The political and military landscape of 17th century France was rife with intrigue and competition, not just between nations, but within the very heart of the king's forces. 
One of the most intense and dramatic rivalries was between the Musketeers and the Cardinal's Guard, a competing elite unit established by Cardinal Richelieu, the King's powerful chief minister. The origins of the rivalry can be traced back to the differing roles and allegiances of the two units. The Musketeers were primarily the King's personal guard, their loyalty sworn directly to King Louis. In contrast, the Cardinal's Guard was formed to protect Cardinal Richelieu and enforce his policies. This distinction in loyalty often placed the two groups at odds, as Richelieu's political maneuvers sometimes conflicted with the King's wishes or interests. Cardinal Richelieu, a master of political strategy, understood the importance of having his own elite force. Established in the 1620s, the Cardinal's Guard was composed of highly skilled soldiers, much like the Musketeers. This parallel structure created an inherent tension, as both groups sought to assert their superiority and maintain their influence at court. The rivalry was not just a matter of political allegiances. It permeated the daily lives of the soldiers. Musketeers and the Cardinal's Guard often found themselves stationed in close proximity, whether in Paris or on campaign. This proximity bred competition and occasional conflict. The soldiers prided themselves on their skills and reputation, and any slight real or perceived could spark a confrontation. One particularly notorious incident occurred in the spring of 1626, when a group of musketeers led by Captain d'Artagnan clashed with members of the Cardinal's Guard in the streets of Paris. The altercation began over a minor dispute, a jostled shoulder, a careless remark, but quickly escalated into a full-blown brawl. Swords were drawn, and the air was filled with the clash of steel. Though the skirmish was eventually broken up by other royal guards, it left a lasting mark on the already fraught relationship between the two groups. Both the Musketeers and the Cardinal's Guard adhered to a strict code of honour, which dictated their behaviour and interactions. Duels were a common way to settle disputes, and the outcome of these encounters often had significant implications for personal and unit honour. The code of honour required that any insult or challenge be met with immediate and decisive action, further fueling the rivalry. In 1627, a prominent duel took place between Arthos, a veteran musketeer, and Armand de Jussac, a captain in the Cardinal's Guard. The duel was instigated by a perceived insult to the honour of the musketeers during a royal event. Both men were renowned for their swordsmanship, and their duel became a spectacle for those at court. The fight was fierce and evenly matched, but in the end, Arthos emerged victorious. The victory was celebrated by the musketeers, while the Cardinal's guard was left to nurse their wounded pride. The rivalry between the musketeers and the Cardinal's guard was not just a matter of personal honour. It had significant political dimensions. Cardinal Richelieu wielded immense power and often found himself at odds with other factions at court. The musketeers, loyal to the king, sometimes found themselves drawn into these political struggles, acting as enforcers of the king's will against Richelieu's machination. During the day of the dupes in 1630, a political crisis erupted when Queen Mother Marie de Medici attempted to oust Richelieu from power. The musketeers were called upon to protect the king and support his decision to retain Richelieu. Tensions reached a boiling point as Richelieu's supporters, including the Cardinal's Guard, faced off against those loyal to the Queen. The Musketeers played a pivotal role in ensuring Richelieu's survival, highlighting their importance in the intricate power plays of the French court. The rivalry extended to the battlefield, where the Musketeers and the Cardinal's Guard often found themselves fighting side by side against common enemies, Despite their mutual disdain, they were forced to cooperate during military campaigns. However, this cooperation was often uneasy, marked by competition for glory and recognition. During the Siege of Arras in 1640, both units were deployed to break the Spanish hold on the city. The musketeers, led by d'Artagnan, and the cardinal's guard under Captain de Rochefort, executed a daring joint operation to storm a heavily fortified position. Despite their animosity, they worked together to achieve their objective. The operation 
was a success, but the underlying tension remained, with each unit vying for credit and honours. Amidst the broader conflict, individual relationships added another layer of complexity. Friendships and enmities formed between members of the two units, influenced by their interactions both on and off the battlefield, these personal dynamics often mirrored the larger rivalry, shaping the behaviour and decisions of the soldiers. The complex friendship between D'Artagnan and Rochefort exemplified this dynamic. While the two men respected each other's skills and bravery, their loyalty to their respective units often placed them at odds. Their relationship was a blend of mutual admiration and rivalry, marked by moments of cooperation and conflict. This personal connection added a human element to the broader tensions between the musketeers and the cardinal's guard. The rivalry between the musketeers and the cardinal's guard was a defining feature of their history. It shaped their identities, influenced their actions, and left a lasting legacy in the annals of French military history. While the competition was intense, it also pushed both units to excel, driving them to greater heights of skill and dedication. Behind the gleaming armour and flashing swords of the musketeers were men of flesh and blood, each with a unique story and distinct personality. While their collective feats have been immortalised in literature and lore, it is the individual tales of bravery, ambition, and human complexity that truly bring the legend of the musketeers to life. Perhaps the most famous of all the musketeers, Charles de Bats Castelmore d'Artagnan, was the real-life inspiration for Alexandre Dumas's iconic character, Born into a modest noble family in Gascony around 1611, D'Artagnan's journey from a rural upbringing to the halls of power in Paris is a tale of ambition, bravery, and strategic acumen. D'Artagnan's arrival in Paris is a story rife with drama. The young Gascon, armed with little more than a letter of introduction and boundless ambition, sought to make his mark. Upon his arrival, he was almost immediately drawn into a duel with the Cardinal's guard, a daring move that caught the attention of Captain Lieutenant de Troisville, who saw potential in the audacious young man. This encounter set the stage for D'Artagnan's rapid rise within the Musketeers. D'Artagnan's military career was marked by numerous exploits, including his prominent role in the siege of La Rochelle and later in the Thirty Years' War. Known for his quick wit, unwavering loyalty, and unparalleled bravery, he quickly became a trusted confidant of the king and a linchpin within the musketeers. His ability to navigate the treacherous waters of court intrigue while remaining steadfastly loyal to his comrades made him a legendary figure, both in his time and in historical memory. Another larger-than-life figure was Armand de Silligue d'Athos d'Autevielle, known simply as Athos. Born into nobility, Arthos was a man of contrasts, a distinguished and stoic warrior with a deeply personal and often tragic backstory. His demeanour was calm and reserved, masking a turbulent inner world shaped by love, loss, and a fierce sense of honour. Athos's life was marked by a secret that haunted him, his marriage to Milady de Winter, a beautiful but treacherous woman whose actions would later bring tragedy upon them both. Athos discovered that Milady was a criminal with a dark past, and in a fit of rage and despair he repudiated her, casting her out of his life. This personal betrayal left a deep scar on Athos, influencing his outlook and adding a layer of melancholy to his otherwise stoic nature. Despite his personal struggles, Athos was revered for his leadership and tactical brilliance. He was a mentor to the younger musketeers, his wisdom and experience guiding them through numerous battles. His presence was a stabilizing force, embodying the virtues of the musketeers and the aristocratic code of honor that defined their ethos. Isaac de Porto, known as Porthos, was a stark contrast to Athos. Born in 1617 in Bern, Porthos was larger than life both in stature and personality. His boisterous nature, love of luxury, and unshakable confidence made him a memorable and charismatic figure within the musketeer. Porthos was driven by a desire for wealth and status, 
but beneath his flamboyant exterior lay a heart of gold and a fierce loyalty to his friends. Porthos's ambition often led him into humorous and dramatic situations. In one notable instance, he engaged in a duel to defend the honor of a wealthy widow he hoped to marry, only to discover that his would-be bride had already remarried. Undeterred, Porthos shrugged off the disappointment and continued his quest for fortune with the same relentless enthusiasm. Porthos's strength and bravery were unmatched. On the battlefield, his sheer physical presence and combat prowess made him a formidable opponent. Off the battlefield, his jovial nature and insatiable appetite for life provided a much-needed counterbalance to the more serious and introspective athos. Henry d'Aramitz, or Aramis, was perhaps the most enigmatic of the musketeers. Born in Bern in 1620, Aramis was initially destined for the priesthood before being drawn into the world of the musketeers. His dual nature, torn between his religious aspirations and his life as a soldier, added a layer of complexity to his character. Aramis's charm and intelligence often placed him at the centre of court intrigue. In one instance, he uncovered a plot against the king, using his wit and connections to thwart the conspirators. His involvement in the political machinations of the court was both a source of strength and a potential vulnerability, as it frequently drew him into dangerous situations. Aramis's transition from aspiring cleric to musketeer did not diminish his spiritual inclinations. He maintained a deep sense of faith and often struggled with the moral implications of his actions. This internal conflict made him a more introspective and philosophical figure compared to his comrades, but it did not diminish his effectiveness as a soldier. Aramis's ability to navigate the complexities of both faith and warfare made him a unique and compelling figure within the musketeers. Beyond the core group of D'Artagnan, Arthos, Porthos, and Aramis, the musketeers boasted numerous other figures whose exploits contributed to their legendary status. Each musketeer brought their own story, their own strengths and weaknesses, to the Brotherhood. Together, they formed a tapestry of bravery, loyalty, and human complexity that transcended their individual lives. One such figure was Alexandre de Bastan, a musketeer known for his exceptional marksmanship and quiet demeanor, Boston's skills with a musket were unparalleled, earning him a reputation as the best shot in the regiment. His precision and calm under pressure made him an invaluable asset during battles, where his ability to take out key targets often turned the tide in favor of the musketeers. The personalities behind the legends of the musketeers were as diverse and multifaceted as the battles they fought and the intrigues they navigated. Their stories, filled with courage, loyalty, and the occasional personal tragedy, offered a glimpse into the human side of these iconic figures. It is through understanding their individual journeys that we can fully appreciate the collective legacy of the musketeers. The court of King Louis XIII was a labyrinth of power, filled with treachery, ambition, and intrigue. For the musketeers, navigating this environment required not only martial prowess, but also keen political acumen. Their role extended far beyond the battlefield, as they became pivotal players in the power struggles that defined the reign of Louis and his chief minister, Cardinal Richelieu. Cardinal Richelieu, appointed as the king's chief minister in 1624, was a master of political strategy. His primary goal was to strengthen the power of the monarchy and centralize the authority of the state. To achieve this, he needed to curtail the influence of the nobility and ensure the loyalty of the military forces, including the musketeers and his own cardinal's guard. Richelieu's rise to power was marked by his ability to navigate the dangerous waters of court politics. He was a shrewd and often ruthless operator, willing to employ any means necessary to achieve his ends. This often brought him into conflict with other factions at court, including those loyal to Queen Mother Marie de Medici and various high-ranking nobles who resented his influence. The musketeers found themselves in the thick of this intrigue, as loyal servants of the king, they were tasked with protecting Louis during the tense standoff between Richelieu and the Queen Mother. The musketeer's presence 
was not just a show of force, but also a statement of loyalty to the king. Their role was critical in ensuring that the balance of power remained in favour of Richelieu. The drama reached its climax when Louis ultimately sided with Richelieu, reaffirming his chief minister's position and solidifying his control over the government. The influence of Queen Mother Marie de Medici was a constant factor in the political landscape. Her ambitions and alliances often brought her into direct conflict, with Richelieu creating a complex dynamic that the musketeers had to navigate. Their loyalty to the king sometimes put them at odds with the queen, adding another layer of tension to their duties. The musketeers were frequently drawn into the queen's schemes, either as protectors or as targets. On one occasion, they thwarted an assassination attempt against Richelieu orchestrated by the Queen's supporters. The plot was uncovered through the vigilance of the musketeers, who intercepted messages and neutralized the would-be assassins. This event underscored the dangerous and ever-shifting alliances within the court and the crucial role the musketeers played in maintaining the King's authority. Richelieu's political machinations often involved the musketeers in covert operations. These missions ranged from espionage to counter-espionage, requiring the musketeers to employ their skills in intelligence gathering and subterfuge. Richelieu trusted the musketeers with sensitive tasks, knowing their loyalty to the king would ensure their discretion and effectiveness. One notable mission involved a secret diplomatic trip to Spain, where the musketeers were tasked with negotiating a delicate truce. Disguised and operating under false identities, they navigated the treacherous political landscape of the Spanish court. The mission was fraught with danger, but their success helped secure a temporary peace and demonstrated their versatility beyond the battlefield. The Fronde... A series of civil wars in France between 1648 and 1653 posed one of the greatest internal challenges to the monarchy. While this period extended beyond the reign of King Louis, its roots lay in the political and social tensions of his era. The musketeers were integral in quelling these uprisings, often finding themselves in the crossfire of noble factions and popular unrest. During the early stages of the Fronde, the musketeers were deployed to suppress a rebellion led by disaffected nobles. Their mission was to protect the young king Louis XIV and ensure the stability of the monarchy. The battles were fierce, and the musketeers faced well-armed and determined opponents. Their loyalty and martial skill were critical in maintaining order and safeguarding the royal family during this turbulent period. Espionage was a constant undercurrent in the court of King Louis. The musketeers were often called upon to gather intelligence, intercept enemy communications, and root out spies within their ranks. Their dual role as soldiers and secret agents required a unique blend of combat skills and cunning. One of the most daring acts of espionage involved uncovering a plot to overthrow the king, orchestrated by a faction of disloyal nobles. The musketeers, led by D'Artagnan, infiltrated the conspirators' ranks, gathering crucial evidence that exposed the plot. The subsequent arrests and executions sent a clear message about the dangers of treason and the reach of the king's loyal guards. The political intrigues of the French court left an indelible mark on the musketeers. Their involvement in these high-stakes games of power and loyalty highlighted their importance, not just as warriors, but as key figures in the stability of the realm. Their ability to navigate the complexities of court politics while maintaining their honour and loyalty to the king cemented their legendary status. The story of the musketeers is not just one of glory and heroism, but also one of change and adaptation. As the 17th century progressed, the role and status of the musketeers evolved, reflecting broader shifts in French society, politics, and military strategy. From their zenith under Louis XIII and Cardinal Richelieu to their decline and eventual transformation under Louis XIV, the journey of the musketeers is a fascinating tale of resilience and reinvention. Under the leadership of Louis and Cardinal Richelieu, the musketeers reached the height of their power and prestige. They were indispensable in the king's efforts to consolidate power and enforce royal authority. 
their exploits in battle and their crucial role in court intrigues made them legendary figures celebrated both in their time and in historical memory. However, the death of Louis XIII in 1643 marked the beginning of significant changes for the musketeers. The ascension of Louis XIV, the Sun King, brought a new vision for France and its military. Louis XIV, known for his absolute monarchy and grandiose style, sought to centralize all power in his hands. This shift had profound implications for the musketeers. The early years of Louis XIV's reign saw the musketeers continuing to serve with distinction. They played a key role in protecting the young king during the tumultuous period of the Fronde, a series of civil wars that threatened the stability of the monarchy. Their loyalty and bravery during these conflicts further cemented their reputation as elite soldiers. As he matured and solidified his control, he undertook sweeping reforms to streamline and professionalize the French military. One of the key changes was the establishment of the Maison du Roy, or the King's Household, which included several elite units responsible for the King's personal safety and ceremonial duties. The musketeers were incorporated into this structure, but their role began to shift. The Maison du Roy was a reflection of his desire for absolute control and order. The musketeers while still respected, found themselves increasingly involved in ceremonial duties rather than active combat. They became a symbol of the king's power and grandeur, parading in splendid uniforms at court functions and state events. Despite their evolving role, the musketeers were still called upon to prove their mettle on the battlefield. One of their last significant military engagements was the Battle of the Dunes in 1658, part of the Franco-Spanish War. The battle, fought near Dunkirk, saw the musketeers in action alongside other French forces and their English allies under Oliver Cromwell. At the Battle of the Dunes, the musketeers demonstrated their enduring combat prowess. Charging up the sandy slopes under heavy fire, they played a crucial role in breaking the Spanish lines. Their bravery and tactical skill were instrumental in securing a decisive victory for France, showcasing that, despite changes in their status, the musketeers remained formidable warriors. However... The evolution of warfare in the late 17th century saw the rise of large professional standing armies, reducing the relative importance of elite units like the musketeers. The focus shifted to larger-scale military campaigns requiring extensive logistical support and coordination. The musketeers, once the forefront of French military power, found their combat roles diminishing. The changing nature of warfare was exemplified during the War of the Grand Alliance. While the musketeers participated in various campaigns, their role was increasingly overshadowed by the massed infantry and artillery units that dominated the battlefields. The era of the small elite fighting force was giving way to the age of the modern army. As their military relevance declined, the musketeers underwent a transformation into a more ceremonial and symbolic role. Louis XIV, ever the master of spectacle, recognized the value of the musketeers as icons of royal authority and tradition. They became prominent figures at court, their presence lending an air of historical continuity and prestige. The musketeers were a central feature of the elaborate court life at Versailles. They participated in grand parades, state ceremonies, and various public spectacles designed to glorify the Sun King. Their uniforms, now more decorative than functional, symbolized the grandeur and timelessness of the French monarchy. The musketeers continued in this ceremonial capacity into the 18th century, but their role was increasingly seen as anachronistic in a changing world. The Enlightenment and subsequent political upheavals, including the French Revolution, dramatically altered the landscape of French society and governance. In 1776, the musketeers were officially disbanded by Louis XVI as part of a broader effort to reduce military expenditures. The disbandment of the musketeers marked the end of an era. Their final parade, a somber yet dignified event, was a poignant reminder of their storied past.
Former musketeers, now veterans of both battlefield and court, bid farewell to an institution that had defined their lives and careers. Interestingly, the legacy of the musketeers did not end with their disbandment. In 1814, during the Bourbon Restoration, King Louis briefly revived the musketeers as a symbol of royalist tradition. Though this revival was short-lived, it underscored the enduring appeal and symbolic power of the musketeers. The revived musketeers participated in ceremonial duties and served as a living link to the past. Their presence during the Restoration was a nostalgic nod to a bygone era, a testament to the lasting impact of the musketeers on French cultural memory. The decline and transformation of the musketeers reflect the broader changes in French society and military strategy from the 17th to the 18th centuries. From elite warriors and political actors to ceremonial icons, the musketeers adaptees of histening tides of history. The legacy of the musketeers extends far beyond their historical role as elite soldiers in the service of the French crown. Their story has transcended the bounds of history to become a cultural phenomenon, immortalized in literature, art, and popular culture. The musketeers have come to symbolize timeless values of bravery, loyalty, and adventure, captivating the imaginations of people across generations and continents. The transformation of the musketeers from historical figures to legendary heroes began in the 19th century, largely thanks to the work of Alexandre Dumas. Dumas's narrative was a masterful blend of historical fact and creative fiction, breathing new life into the stories of these iconic figures. Dumas drew heavily on historical sources, including the memoirs of the real d'Artagnan, to create his vivid and compelling caring characters. While he took considerable liberties with the facts, his portrayal of the musketeers as noble and valiant heroes struck a chord with readers. The novel's themes of friendship, honor, and the fight against tyranny resonated deeply, ensuring its lasting popularity. The success of the three musketeers sparked a wave of adaptations across various media. The Musketeers' swashbuckling adventures have been brought to life in countless films, television series, stage plays, and even comic book. Each adaptation has contributed to the enduring appeal of the Musketeers, introducing them to new audiences and keeping their legend alive. One of the most iconic film adaptations is the 1973 version directed by Richard Lester, starring Michael York as D'Artagnan, along with Oliver Reed, Frank Finlay and Richard Chamberlain as Athos, Porthos and Aramis, respectively. His adaptation, known for its humour and dynamic action sequences, became a classic further cementing the Musketeer's place in popular culture. The Musketeers have come to symbolize a range of ideals that continue to be relevant in contemporary society. Their unwavering loyalty to their comrades and their dedication to a noble cause resonate with modern audiences. The themes of justice, courage and camaraderie embodied by the Musketeers are timeless, transcending the historical context in which they originally lived. The phrase, all, for one and one for all, popularized by the novel, encapsulates the spirit of the musketeers and has been adopted as a motto for various groups and organizations around the world. This phrase reflects the values of unity and mutual support, principles that are universally admired and aspired to. The cultural impact of the musketeers is evident in the numerous references and homages found in contemporary media. From animated television shows to video games, the musketeers continue to inspire creators and entertain audiences. Their story has been reimagined in various settings, from science fiction to steampunk, demonstrating their versatility as cultural icons. Beyond their presence in popular culture, the Musketeers have also left a significant legacy in the fields of education and historical scholarship. Their story provides valuable insights into the social, political and military history of early modern France. Scholars continue to study the real Musketeers and the historical context in which they lived, uncovering new details and perspectives. The Chateau de Castlemore, the birthplace of the real d'Artagnan, 
has become a site of historical interest and a destination for those seeking to learn more about the life and times of the Musketeers. Visitors can explore exhibitions that delve into the history of the Musketeers, their role in French history, and their enduring cultural impact. The story of the Musketeers is one of adventure, loyalty, and the pursuit of honour, from their origins as an elite military unit serving the French king to their transformation into cultural icons, the musketeers have left an indelible mark on history and popular culture. Their legacy continues to inspire and captivate, reminding us of the timeless values they embodied. The musketeers have transcended their historical origins to become symbols of timeless values that resonate across generations. Their adventures, both real and fictional, continue to captivate our imaginations and inspire us to live with courage and integrity. In a world that often seems divided and uncertain, the legacy of the musketeers serves as a beacon of hope and a reminder of the power of unity and friendship. Thank you for joining us on this enchanting journey through medieval history. While our weekly episodes will continue to captivate your imagination, there's an exclusive treasure trove for subscribers, a secret vault of bonus episodes filled with extra tales and deep dives into the subjects we cover. Your curiosity fuels our mission, and we're truly thankful for your support. Until we meet again among stone walls and towering turrets, Keep that torch of curiosity burning bright. Thank you for listening.